Hey guys, so uh, where we're at now is I'm, I'm ready to begin the process of closing this tank up. So what that means is I'm gonna add a whole bunch more Pro Seal. I'm gonna take this back piece and I'm gonna lay it down in here and begin the process of actually riveting it and closing it. One thing I had thought to do was create a window right here uh, so that I would have immediate access to the fuel sender, which I'm gonna talk to here in a bit. But I didn't really know if it was a good idea. My big concern is that, you know, you're, you're cutting an extra hole and you're doing something that's kind of outside the plans. Plus it would add a whole bunch of extra time, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. What do you think? Well, like you said, it's a lot of extra work and uh, honestly, I don't know that it adds anything. Plus the more holes you have in the tank, you know, it could cause extra leaking and we just, we don't need that. Yeah, uh, it's a good point. Thanks. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I probably won't do it. Uh, I think it's, it is a good idea, but I think it's one of those things that I can always do later on down the road if I absolutely needed it. As to the fuel sender itself, that's this doohickey right here. One thing I wanted to talk to was the fact that you'll see that there's kind of this funky bend in the wire. And that's because I was trying to make it so that it stopped at the sender itself and not by running into one of the walls. So for example, this is the bottom of the tank, the low side of the tank. So when it's empty or running out of gas, it's, it, it stops right here and doesn't stop by running into the tank. That could potentially scratch a hole or, or probably not all the way through, but at least cause issues that we don't necessarily need. And the, the upside of that is the, is the same thing. It stops here, not by running into the, this piece or, or this piece, and it can't get like stuck up here. So it stops right there. Now what that means is full is, you know, not completely full. Empty is, you know, not, not completely empty, which not completely empty is actually a good thing. Not completely full is meaningless. So I think we're gonna be okay. Before I can continue, I have to order a bunch more parts. So I wanna continue working on the fuel tank. I wanna continue working on the primary wing, put the skin on, put the pedo tube in, do all that other stuff, but <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't because I need another piece of Alcad, one that I had screwed up previously. I could use it, but I'd rather just order a new one, it'll be cheap. Uh, I need the little CAV 110, which is the little plug that screws into the bottom. I am sure they sent them to me, but I have gone through everything and I cannot find them. So I don't know if I accidentally threw them away or what. Again, it's just gonna be, it's, it's, a, it's the nipple. It's just a cheap piece. It's something that I need to order. I need more Pro Seal. Uh, so at this point, I've gone through uh, two quarts of Pro Seal, really, I think. And when I say two quarts, I mean mostly two quarts. It's hard to get all the Pro Seal out of the quart can. Uh, but so that's right now I've gone through two. I think probably about a quart and a half just on the fuel tank is, is or at least a quart on the fuel tank is what you'll go through. And then on some of the other pieces and parts, you'll use a bunch. So I need another thing of Pro Seal. Uh, and I need to get. Oh, the pitot tube. So they make a stainless steel pitot tube. Um, normally the pitot tube is something that you actually fabricate yourself out of just a piece of aluminum tubing, the same tubing that you use as the vent on the fuel, fuel line. Uh, but they actually have a really nice stainless steel pitot tube that you can order from vans. So I'm gonna order one of those and use those on the, on the wing. I mean, if you're gonna do it, let's do it right, right? Uh, and other bits and parts. Uh, like I wanna get, um, on the bottom of the wing, they actually have the nice big, uh, um, uh, what is it called? The, the tie down hook. Uh, it's not a hook. It's like an eyelet that fits up in there. So I want to get that uh, and just, you know, a few other things. So I want to I want to keep working on the plane, but I kind of have to wait until that stuff comes in. So to that end, I'm going to move forward a couple chapters, I guess, and work on the airline for the plane. Uh, aileron, aileron. Uh, work on the aileron for the plane, and um, yeah, hopefully make some progress. It's about damn time, right?
So it was a little hazy today, but other than that, it was fairly nice. Uh, decided to go ahead and get started on this thing and begin by marking parts. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out is that uh, my buddy Lynn said I should probably go ahead and get the uh, heated pitot tube as opposed to the non-heated version. Uh, he said if I don't, I'll regret it later. So, okay, I'll research that then. But right here, you see me going through and doing same thing you've seen me do a million times before. I'm cleaning up parts, I'm drilling holes, I'm, you know, countersinking and just doing the various things you need to do uh, to put together a wing. It's the exact same thing I've done on the wing, on the horizontal stabilizer, on the vertical stabilizer, etc. So uh, nothing new here. So I'm going through and putting the aileron together and so far, nothing difficult nothing magical same thing as always and um, i did come across the uh these nut plates so yet again we have nut plates uh, you use them throughout the plane but this one is kind of a 90 degree angle and it's packed tightly in a corner and it's a little difficult to get to and so i thought i would show you how i'm actually setting these nut plates uh, the process i go through to make sure that they actually work here you can see on the right you've got this nut plate that's kind of tight up in this corner on this particular piece, and here I haven't put it in yet. This side is countersunk, which doesn't really present a problem other than you, because they're so close together, you, you can't really have two um, clecos here and expect to have any kind of access to anything. So the way I've done it is I go through and I put these in here, and then I put two clecos in, and afterwards I get the screw and actually screw uh, this this guy in so that we have a firm hold and that way it also makes it so you can uh, make sure it will work later so you can see there's really there's no way to get in there right there's not a lot of room so let's go ahead and put the screw in the this now this is a temporary screw that I have several of around the shop that I use for just this This screw is pretty thoroughly worn. And it doesn't matter that this is a, uh, you know, would be a countersunk screw. It just needs to hold it tight, too. And so now that I have the screw in, I can take these Clecos out, like so, and see that our, our holes are still lined up. So that when I put this guy in, you can see it sticks through just fine. And I go ahead and I put in one on either side, put my finger over one, flip it over, and do the squeezer tool on the other. And you can see in this particular case, I have this step over yoke on here so that I can get up in there. I've also got a really small, uh, let's see if I can get that off there, there we go, a really small head on this guy so that, again, we can get in there. There's just not a lot of room to get that rivet. And this little thing will get in here nicely and, and do the squeeze without uh, mangling or screwing up these flanges. As you can see here, that's what I used here. And it worked for perfectly. Yay! So with that, I thought I'd give you guys a brief update of what's going on uh, in my life. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, I, I asked uh, earlier in one of my videos uh, what you guys thought I should do, and the response was vast. Uh, the number of people that sent me personal emails, either through YouTube, email, uh, Google, Facebook, I mean, just this endless uh, parade of, of responses was just amazing. And I, I want to say thank you very, very much. Also, the responses kind of ran the gamut. Um, there's a lot uh, on YouTube. It seems like primarily the responses were, yeah, you probably don't want to go into pro, uh, uh, being a pilot at this point. Since you're a programmer, you have a career. Uh, you're getting on an age and there's not going to be much money. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think I didn't stress enough how much I really don't want to be a programmer anymore. And uh, that I'm, I'm not uh, coin operated, if you will. So for me, the fact that, you know, the money won't be probably what I was used to, that's not a big deal. So 
thank you for everyone who said, eh, you might want to consider something else. Uh, also, when it comes to like just being a programmer and programming something in the aviation field, as cool as that sounds, if you don't have like an idea or some notion of what you're writing, then that's difficult. I also know from experience that um, those unicorn applications that actually do really well and take off uh, are pretty rare. So again, uh, that's an industry I've been in for 25 years and I just, I kind of want to get out of it. Uh, so that was interesting. So I think the overall YouTube response was fairly negative. And I mean negative in that y'all thought it was a bad idea, not negative in that you were uh, impolite or rude. Which, by the way, uh, I have to admit, I think I have some of the best YouTubers on YouTube because n no one's ever rude. If you guys go watch some other channels and you see some of the comments and it's like, ooh, I mean, it's caustic. Anyways, thanks for being awesome. Um, in person, so I spoke to a lot of different people that uh, do this job in person and have been doing it for years. And the vast majority of them have said yeah, why, why wouldn't you do this? Um, and so I think I'm, I, since I was kind of leaning towards it anyways, I think I kind of want to go ahead and, and go that route. Um, to that end, I've been flying more. I've actually been getting back up in the air and doing some flying stuffs. By the way, you'll see here I'm actually priming these parts because it specifically says in the instructions to prime the parts, which I was a little surprised about. But uh, yeah, I've been doing more flying, which is awesome. I'm enjoying the flying thing again. I think I shouldn't have stopped, but uh, as you all know, life being what it is and building, uh, building the plane and working and all that other stuff, flying was just, it was difficult to do it at the same time. But since uh, I'm unemployed now, I'm getting back in the air, going up and flying. I've been going every single day and I've been enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, I probably will have my privates done uh, by the end of the month, according to my instructor. Uh, which is awesome. Looking forward to that. And then I'm going to seek out a school to do the ATP thing. I think I actually want to go ahead and make a go of it. I figured, what the hell? I'm young-ish. <laughs> uh, I have the desire. I certainly enjoy it. And hey, you know what? I still have a skill I can fall back on if it doesn't work out. So for whatever reason, if it just doesn't work, I can always go be a programmer again. I don't want to do that, but I can. And so, you know what? You only live once. And so that's where I'm at. Uh, I figured, screw it, I'm going to go ahead and make the leap. So anyways, I want to thank everybody for your responses and all the feedback. Uh, it was invaluable. It really helped me to consider all the angles. Uh, the number of people that actually came at me with like hard stats and numbers was amazing. I mean, and, and a lot of people, a lot of you guys actually brought up stuff that I, I would have never thought of. So thank you very much for all your inputs. Uh, it was, it, like I said, it's overwhelming when you do this and you, you kind of open yourself up to, I don't want to say abuse, but you open yourself up to comment and people, uh, you know, it never amazes me how awesome people are when people come out of the blue and they want to help and they're cool. And, and that was just fantastic. So thanks guys. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to go back out there and work on this sailor run more fun, fun. <laughs>